this looks like my kind of coffee. I can't wait to try it out. And I can't wait to try that out. Dig dry, DIY. Last year, I rented a Dyna SC16 and we split a bunch of firewood in an eight hour rental period. I had a few quirks and issues with it. They were solvable, but it gave me a little fit. But the good folks at Dyna Products saw that video. They thought I deserved to try again with their newer model. So they've brought one down for me to try out. And we've got just a few hours this afternoon to see how it works. Hopefully we can beat the snow and rain that's coming our way. But we better get going. Look at this handy dandy little light plug holder right here. Keeps your plug nice and dry when you're not using it. Except it's the wrong one for this. No, it's the right one. Dad's back to help out. He fell around Thanksgiving time and broke a hip. Yep. But they put him back together now. He's a bionic man. Bionic. With a new hip. And he's been eager to get back into it, right? We're going to test her out. Light duty. He can only run the controls on the splitter, all right? He can drive a dump truck too, hopefully. All right, let's head on over there. All right, so we're on our way over to a neighbor's. We've already done a lot of the setup work. We hauled some logs. Uh, if you watched a couple weeks ago, we took Louie and the F-750 and went over to a field and picked up some logs that have been set out for a couple years. I've got all those staged, and we're gonna use my father-in-law's Volvo mini excavator. We should be able to load the wood processor with the mini excavator. And I'm hoping I got them set so that you can sit in one spot and reach three different piles. But the real issue we're facing is we haven't had a good break of the weather. I've had this processor for a couple of weeks almost now. and just haven't had a real good opportunity. They're calling for more terrible weather this weekend and then it's supposed to get really cold. So we're gonna go for it. We've got a few hours this afternoon. We might as well see what we can get. Now we're just gonna go over there, get all set up and see if we can get this processor up and going. I'm hopeful that this will work pretty well, and as long as we don't have too many really gnarly logs, it'll go quicker than you think. Current time, 1.42 p.m. This is a Kohler, the last one was a Cat, and they said they're really impressed with this Kohler engine, so. But I don't see uh, anything obvious for a dipstick. I trust that there's some kind of sensor or something. Let's see if it starts. I'm gonna put the elevator down. So the SC16 unfolds kind of like a transformer. We've got the big elevator that you can get unfolded. We've had pretty good luck loading the dump truck, so we'll raise it up pretty high. If you go too high, the logs will just roll down the elevator as you try to run it. And then the log table folds down. It's got some legs that go down against the ground to help support all the weight, but this thing is really nice. You can put quite a few logs on here. You load the logs onto the log table, and then these chains right here advance the logs into the conveyor, this conveyor here, feeds the logs to the saw. There's a clamp that holds the log down, and then a saw that cuts them off. We'll see all that in just a minute. I think Troy might be calling. Okay, we're gonna try to do something to contain some of the sawdust. This thing creates an incredible amount of sawdust, and to try to avoid a mess, we're, I'm gonna see if I can make a capturing device. All right, we're almost ready. The time is now 2.30 p.m. We've got about two and a half hours of daylight. A couple of the new features that are different than the last one is this platform here to stand on. That was one of the things I complained about. Another thing was we had a lot of trouble with the, the logs dropping off the end and I've been instructed on how to do it a little bit better. So dad will probably be running it most time, but I want to try it first. Some of these logs are small enough they don't need to go through the processor, so I'm just dicing them up with the saw and we'll throw them on the elevator.
something like this on a log, I should have trimmed off ahead of time. This can really slow down production. If I'd have, if I'd have caught it, I'd have done it beforehand. <laughs> cutting great this time around so let's see elapsed time so far is 3 30 so we've been at it one hour almost have a dump truck load all right so the chain is caught on the bar it's stuck so it's either kind of too tight or something's jumped off i need to find a screwdriver and some tools and we'll go after it so i got this bar off of here and this top sprocket is stuck. So there's a lot of moving parts on these things. And every chainsaw, every firewood operation is going to have, have situations. So we just have our first one. Fortunately, they gave us a spare bar. So we'll put that on and see how it goes. So there's the spare. I don't see a grease hole on it. But that other one is just stuck. So we'll swap this out and be back in action. We had like uh, three minutes of sunshine. It was beautiful. It felt like yeah. tropical here. Didn't you see it? Well, no, we was inside. You were here. It was just a minute ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got a new chain and bar back on there. We got the orange stop guide adjusted and fixed. It broke off. We're going to fire it back up. Time is 4 o'clock. So, we've got another hour at least. Traditionally, I've rented this processor during the week between Christmas and New Year's because I'm normally off of work that week. The eight hour rental usually goes by the hour meter of the machine, so it's really beneficial to have all your logs staged and ready ahead of time so you can be as efficient as possible while the processor is running. So that's a really good sized log. It fit through there. This is putting her to the test. This is a big log. For this time around, we still had everything prepped, but we weren't pushing it nearly as hard as what this unit is capable of. But our pace was such that nobody felt rushed. My brother Troy was able to keep up nicely by somewhat stacking the split wood in the dump truck, which really helps to maximize the amount of wood hauled per trip. All right, we got the 750 chock full. We're gonna get it out of the way, see if Louie can go underneath the elevator, and then we'll just keep rolling. The sun came out again. All right, this is actually pretty impressive. If, if we can use the elevator to dump into this truck, that's going to be pretty cool. Okay, the sun's out. We're going to try to make a little more hay. Time is 440. So another thing I've learned over time to speed up production is to put the big end, the butt end, in this processor first. And that way as the log goes up, it gets smaller, and then you're not dealing with those big rounds at the very end. That really helps out. We're going to run one more log. It's a big log and I want to change out this wedge. This is a four-way wedge. I'm going to change it to a six-way wedge. I got to take a pin out of the bottom first. This has got to go in this way. We did. It's just that simple. We'll do all our big logs in a row and I'll put the four-way back on. And my dad was keeping a pace at the controls that was comfortable for him Got a tight fit on this last log. And I didn't have to run around like a maniac to keep up with the excavator and the chainsaw. I'm glad we started on the big end first and made sure that fit through there. It's getting smaller and better now, but that was a big log to run through here, and that's, that's impressive, especially with a six-way wedge. By the way, you don't have to do this. It'll feed eventually. All right, it is 5.50 p.m. We're about out of daylight. We got a good amount cut in the short amount of time that we ran it. We're going to see what this weather does coming in. We may be calling it quits, or if we get another opportunity, we'll run it again. So I'll let you know what we decide to do right after this. And now here we are exactly one week later, and a lot's happened in that week. We got a big polar vortex that sent the temperatures down below zero. We had the Fort Wayne Farm Show that consumed a good part of the week. And most recently, last night, it snowed. So everything's covered with snow. We're gonna head back over to the wood lot 
get things cleaned up so we can work and then see if we can finish up some of those logs. All right, well, the snow situation isn't ideal, but the forecast for the next coming week is in the 40s and 50s. So all this is gonna turn to muddy, sloppy mess. We'd rather deal with the snow than deal with the mud. We're gonna try to blow off enough as we can. There's ice underneath all this, so we'll leave snow where it doesn't matter because that, that kind of helps on the ice. But we'll get all this blown off and see if we can get the excavator started. We'll be ready to cut some logs. It'll still work, it's just it's not perfect, but it's never perfect. We did encounter our first freeze problem. The belt is frozen to the conveyor, so we gotta see if we can get it unstuck. There we go. We'll see if that's loose enough at the top. If not, I'll have to let it down. I could probably fold it up and it would break loose. Oh yeah, we're back in business now. Next thing is to get mini excavator in place. We might be ready to roll. All right, I think this is the last big log we're gonna be able to fit on this processor. We'll take those other ones home and do them at the axis. They're just a little bit too big. We got a lot of logs we can run through that are smaller. So let's see if we can get this one through and we'll switch out the wedge and then we'll be starting to make some hay. Well, on second thoughts, it's a quarter of an inch too big. So we're gonna pull that one off of there, switch the wedge out, and just start running these smaller logs. I think the rest of them are all gonna be pretty small and just the four-way wedge will work fine. Everything's switched back around. I think we're ready to try to roll with some of these smaller logs. It looks like a lot, but it'll go through them quick. We hope. We haven't missed much. All right. We tried to run these. None of those will fit over here. Stuff that's small enough to cut with just the chainsaw and throw on the conveyor into the truck, we can set it right here, like that, for example. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe we'll we'll have a time where you just sit and hold logs up for me and I'll cut through Wouldn't them. Would something like that be too crooked? Or yes, that, see? That's too crooked? If you start sorting logs and they're crooked, we can stage them here and I'll try to cut them into cut the, them and use the straight, part. straight pieces. Uh, a junk pile. Okay. Uh, a pile we got to fix, you know, we got to sort. Okay, this is fix. a fixed pile, this is junk. Yeah. Or but, not necessarily junk, but just hand cut. Right, just hand cut. So. Currently we got Rick, my father-in-law here, running his mini excavator. Dad's on his way to McDonald's to get us some lunch. Troy's helping out. This guy's behind the camera. All right, one of these times we're gonna really get rolling. Hey Rick, Rick, give it just a little nudge. So we got lunch covered. Now we're gonna get something done. I've been saying that all morning. So we're about at the right timing for a new chain. We went through some really hard logs. Those little short ones that my cousin Alex brought, those were really hard. And we're through those now. So we're gonna switch out chains. And then it'll cut like a champ again for a little while. And of course we did not pre-wash any of these logs. So there's a good chance there's some dirt on them. Is that like a board stretcher? It's like a board. All right. So we got a new chain on, we're ready to give her another cutting shot. Powder, you know it's time, huh? It was cutting powder and smoking like you start oh, a fire. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it's really time.
All right, Louie is situated in place. We got the 750 full of wood. Fred, Frankie, Fanny, I'm not sure. We're gonna take that home and dump it, come back and see how much they got done. Kind of helps keep the siding from getting too torn up. We'll go ahead and dump it right here. Alright, so this is probably the most inefficient part of the process, dumping it and then picking it up to stack it. I wish there was a way we could avoid that, but right now I don't have a system in place for that. Eventually I want to get to the, to the point where I can put it in totes or put it in some kind of racks, you know, stack it where we process and then just handle those containers and put them in here. So that's something I'm thinking about for down the line. Right now this gives the kids something to do. I give them a few bucks to stack wood and they get a little exercise. Nobody's hurt from that. So one good thing about the cold weather this past week, it froze the pond over. And now two little ladies have some kind of idea in mind. Tomorrow is ice skating day. You can save yourself a lot of headache if you prep the logs properly before they go on the table. The straighter, the better. And if you can remove any protruding little nubs, that'll really help the logs to feed efficiently through the machine. All right, things are moving along pretty good ever since we put that new chain on. Has this ever happened to you? The oil cap, the bar oil cap somehow came loose. This is the sign right here. We got to top her back off. Ooh, that's cold. I should be using the winter oil in the blue jug. We've made our way through that pile of old logs. That, that pile has been there a long time and a lot of it's getting punky. So that's a good word. Is that just a Midwestern word, punky? I don't know. A lot of it's getting punky, which means it's starting to rot and not be very, very good. But we'll cut up what will burn, which is all of it. We got it, we're almost, almost through it. So we are down to where we've got all the logs that are big enough to run through the processor. Rick has done a good job of sorting through what's left. These are just real small skinny poles that don't need any splitting whatsoever. We got a few piles of punky junk stuff. And now we've got these gigantic logs over here. We're gonna put in the back of the 750 and take home the new wood yard. This is a big one. Man, this thing is huge. All right, so out of the stuff we brought home from that field and the stuff that was here, we filled the F-750 twice and we filled Louie twice, so not bad. We're going to try to get the rest of this all out of here and packed up, and we'll see where we're at. We'll, we'll get some totals. So last log, timing's about right. We're about out of daylight, it's snowing, it's time to eat again. Thank you for the help. You tearing this down yet? I'm going to tear it down. Oh, you are? I just want to get it out of here so that it's, it's going to turn to crap. And I want to come tomorrow and push all this off of oh. here. Thank you for the help. You got a ball game to catch, so get going. Yeah.
All right, all that's left is to fold up the elevator. So the problem is the jack won't go up far enough to take the pressure off that pin. So we gotta try to raise the truck up. I don't know if this is gonna work, but you gotta try to back up onto this log. Okay, real easy now. Little bit. Got it. Good idea. Huh? Good idea. Man, if that isn't a mess. I think it's clean enough to make the trip home. Get this turned around. We'll catch up with you there. So it's the next day already. Got back last night, it was dark, so we packed it up. But today we got the uh, logs all dumped out in the new wood yard. So those will be ready for whenever we get to them. The boys came down this afternoon and got all that firewood stacked up. They were surprised when they saw that Louie is still clear full though too. Oh my. <laughs> you thought you were done, right? But I want to quickly share my thoughts on this Dyna processor. This is the fourth time I've rented a Dyna Firewood processor. The first three times I paid for it, and this time they helped me out and sponsored this video. I will say, this time was probably the best experience I had. They've got this new model dialed in. The 2024 even has more features that weren't on this one. And so I'd be excited to try that too. But for the amount of wood that we went through, we had just 10 hours on the hour meter. And we filled the F750 up completely twice, and we filled Louie up twice. So that's a fair bit of wood. I would estimate it to be close to 10 cords. That will take us through the rest of the year, and I would have spent the next couple months probably trying to work it up by myself on my own. So we had a good first day, just a couple hours getting the feel for it. Then the second day, we made a lot of progress and got a lot done. So, so I've said it previously in other videos, and I definitely still believe this is a very viable option for somebody that's got a lot of logs stacked up and wants to make a lot of firewood in a hurry. Having the ability to rent a processor that's nearly $100,000 for just five, six, 700 bucks, whatever it is, that's a heck of a bargain. I liked their product before and I like it still. This one definitely was awesome. That cooler engine was cool and some of the features that they've got, especially that step, worked out great. So thanks so much to Dyna for helping out with this video and giving me another chance to do it. I thought I was all done with firewood processors, but they talked me into it. Thank you to Dad and Rick and Troy and Trent and everybody that helped me out to make this possible. We're set for the rest of the year now. And I wanna thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope that you liked it. If we're lucky, we'll see you in the next one. All right, we're done with firewood for now. Wow, you have coffee in here? Are you a coffee drinker? I love coffee. I'm sure hoping you are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be the coolest thing they brought. Forget the processor, we got our video. We got your video, you're good, you're yeah. good. <laughs>